Hey everybody, Jeremy here. Today I'm going to be making chicken katsu curry inside of the Ninja Foodie. And I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video to Ninja's website where you can find this recipe and try it out for yourself. And also, this recipe is just going to require us to use the sear saute function and the pressure cooking function. No air frying is going to be necessary. So we got quite a few ingredients that we need to get to work with. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is turn on the foodie and heat it up for the searing and saute portion of the recipe. So we're going to turn this on, sear saute, medium high, start. It's going to take around five minutes to heat up. If it takes a little bit longer than that, that's okay. But while that is heating up, let's go prepare our chicken. Now you may remember another video I did where I made cereal crusted chicken. This is going to be a similar process. So we've got ourselves some flour here, one egg, as well as some breadcrumbs. And then I also have myself about a pound of chicken cutlets, basically like tenderloins that I've seasoned with salt and pepper on both sides. So I need to bread this up. So I'm just going to grab one chicken cutlet at a time, work it in the flour, then dip it in the egg, and then dip it in the breadcrumbs and then just move on to the next one. So I've got a few of these to work with here, so I'm just gonna do the rest and then we can move on. The chicken is all breaded and this pot has heated up, so I'm gonna add some oil to this. I'm gonna add four tablespoons of canola oil to this pot. And I'm going to add the chicken to it. And I'm going to let those cook until they are nice and golden brown on both sides. So let's check on our chicken. Now the recipe will tell you to let it cook on both sides for about three or four minutes but I really wouldn't go by that if I were you. The best way to know if this chicken is gonna be done is just to take a temperature reading for yourself. So let's see where we're at. I'm gonna take one of these thicker pieces and stick my thermometer in there. We are at 167, so these are good. So I'm just gonna take these out and put them on a plate. We are done with these and we and we just have to prepare the rest of the ingredients. Now, before moving on to the next step, just go ahead and wipe out the oil from the pot. I'm not gonna clean it completely, so it still has a little bit of little like chicken bits and little charred bits that are still in there. I don't really care about that. Just wanna get rid of all that oil. So I wipe that up with a paper towel and let's do the rest. Now let's get started on the rice. I'm gonna add one, and a half cups of water to the pot and one cup of basmati rice. And now for the final ingredients. So I got myself this eight inch baking dish. I got it from Walmart. I think the brand name is like Wilkson or something like that. So I got it, it was about $7. I've been looking for something more reliable than those shallow aluminum pans that I've been using. And this one fits inside of the Ninja Foodi with the reversible rack. So to this, I'm going to add these ingredients here, which is pretty much like a couple carrots and a potato that I've diced up. The recipe also calls for some onion, but I don't have any onion, unfortunately, so can't use it. And it also wants me to add uh, about 1.75 ounces of curry sauce mix. I couldn't find any curry sauce mix. So instead, I just bought some curry that's already in the jar. We're going to see how this works. This is Patak's original butter chicken curry simmer sauce. And this is, well, this is a 15 ounce jar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use three and a half tablespoons to get to that 1.75 equivalent and one cup of chicken broth. I'm going to give this a quick stir. Make sure that all of that curry sauce is nice mixed in with these vegetables.
Now we have the reversible rack and this is great because I can just put this down on here and have these two legs go up like this and we're gonna drop this in the foodie in the lower position. So now I'm gonna take our pressure cooking lid and put this on. So make sure we're sealed and now pressure cook on high for four minutes. All right, let's take a look at it. I'm just gonna give this a good stir. And through all the stirring, I'm hoping that it'll uh, thicken up just a little bit. Then we'll be able to put it together with the chicken and the rice. All right, here we go. Let's give this a taste before my baby starts to get too upset. I'm gonna take a little bit of this chicken with some rice and the vegetables just to make sure I get everything in there. Hmm, that's good. And I can already tell it's gonna be very filling. Let's try the rice by itself. It's just gonna be pretty bland, I, I would imagine. Yeah, it's rice, no big deal. But when combined with the sauce and the chicken, this is one of those things you gotta eat everything together. Yeah, and, that's, and it's very nice when you have it all together. Now, of course, you can season the chicken however you want. If you want to use just regular salt and pepper, you can do that. If you want to use some sort of special seasoning that you love to use on chicken, you can do that too. No right or wrong way to do it. And the sauce has thickened up as I stirred it after the pressure cooking was complete. But yeah, this is good. I definitely think that you should give it a shot. It'd be something very good for dinner. This is something I think my wife will enjoy. So I'll save her some. So thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, I'm Jeremy and I'll talk to you later.